Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. In this video we're going to be answering a question that always comes to mind when you're building with modular engines here in Stormworks. Should you build a inline four-stroke engine or should you build a flat four-cylinder engine? Well we're going to be testing and building both of these engines in this video. We're going to compare both of them and see which one is going to give us the most amount of performance. Now a few things out of the way before we continue. Obviously, I am testing this with the small modular engines. However, this should also be transferable over to the medium and also the large modular engines. We will not be testing anything out with flywheels or with turbos today, where those things can also increase your performance. Today, we're focusing on the orientation of your engine and where you put your cylinders. So with that all set, let's jump straight into it and let's get started. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to bring this into the workbench. Now, for happen's sake, we are going to be running both of the engines using my set RPS ECU. Uh, this is something I just recently put on the workshop because I know a lot of you guys were asking for something that is controlled by a RPS throttle. Now, along with that, you can see both engines are almost identical. The only difference is this one is all in a row, that being an inline engine, and this one is on either side being a flat engine. So the first thing we're going to start off is we're actually going to start by building the engine. Now we're going to be measuring the performance of both of them using a medium generator. So I'm just going to be sticking a medium generator on both sides of this engine. And that's how we are going to be measuring the performance of them. Along with that, we of course are going to need a clutch. So we're going to go and find a clutch for both of these engines. We're going to be sticking it on either end. Now we will not be using any gearboxes, of course, adding gearboxes will of course go and increase the amount of power that you can get out of your generators as i said we are not testing for that now we're doing apple to apple comparison of both engines as they are stock standard on which configuration will give us the most amount of performance we of course are going to connect our generator over to our clutch because that's how we're going to go and measure things so a very simple connection here straight pipe straight pipe and a corner pipe Along with that, we will need to go and add a drive belt onto both of these engines. So we're going to go and add that on. Very simple. The drive belt will allow us to go and connect a few things that we will need for these engines. Firstly, we're going to be connecting a starter motor. Starter motor, of course, will allow us to start the engines up. Now, if you didn't want to use this, you could use an electrical engine. I have got a couple of videos on building modular engines, so I definitely recommend you go and check those out. I go over all the details of why you use certain component components. Uh, so we need that to get everything started up. The next thing we're going to need is, of course, going to be the four main things that engines need. Fuel, air, exhaust, and cooling. So let's start with the fuel. So I'm just going to go and add some small fuel tanks uh, on the back ends of this. Once again, we're not measuring to see how long they last with a certain amount of fuel. We're just testing out performance and how much power we get from these engines, depending on what we give it. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go and add an option for us to get the fuel. So it's a fuel manifold. I'm going to add this one over here. Why not? And the other one I'm going to add over here. Okay, so both of them on the engine. Now, one thing you do need to take into note here is when you're adding your air and fuel and your exhaust and things like that, is when you're building an inline engine, because they're in line and they all connected up here, they will share their fuel, air, exhaust, and cooling. However, if you go and build a flat, you will notice the cylinder banks on either side, which means you do need to connect them up. And that's where we're going to be using our modular engine manifolds. Now I'm just gonna grab a few of them here and we're just gonna make sure we do connect it. So one there, one there, and we're gonna put a straight piece in between that. So they do share their connections. Great, so now that we've got that, let's go and connect our fuel. So once again, very simple. We're just gonna go and get some pipes here. One, two, we're gonna make sure we get all this connected up. And then we can focus on the next thing, which is going to be the air for our example here. Great, so that's connected now. And we just need to do the last one over here. And there we go. So both of these engines now have got fuel. The next thing we want to do is we want to add the air manifold intake. So we can go and find it just over here and we can make sure we add it on. For this engine, which is the inline, I'm just gonna add it just over here. And for the straight, we can add it over here, okay? Along with that, we are also going to be adding and using today air filters. Your mileage might vary if you're using a fluid port, using turbos, ram scoops, etc. 
Now, once we've got that, the last two things we're going to need is going to be exhaust and we're going to need cooling. So for the exhaust, I'm just going to go simply on the end there, add the exhaust, simply over here on the end and add our exhaust on. Nice and easy and straightforward. We're going to add an exhaust piece on there and also an exhaust piece over there. The last thing we need is our cooling. Now, because we're not running these engines for long enough, I'm not going to be adding a full on cooling system. We are simply just going to be adding it onto our cylinders and we're going to be doing a loop system. This is not a correct way for when you are trying to cool your engines here in Stormworks. However, the purpose of this test today, it does not matter how we cool it. It's not going to get hot enough for us to worry about the cooling. And as you can see, I'm just building a complete loop here, self-enclosed, and it should ideally manage our testing today. We can go and connect all this up. Fantastic. So once we've got this all connected up, well, the next thing we're going to focus on is going to be the logic. So for logic, as I said, I'm using my ECUs. This is the set RPS one. It is on the workshop. I will leave a link to if you want to go and use it. We are using it in the survival series and it seems to be doing quite a good job. So logic wise, the first thing we're going to start off with is a composite. Of course, you need to take the composite from your engine over to our actual ECU. This is how it will go and read what is happening with your engine. Okay, whether it needs to increase the fuel, decrease the fuel, add more air, reduce the air. Along with that is we are also going to need some data. So let's start with the data here. We're going to take our generators and connect that over to our generator dial so we know how much power we're producing from both engines. We're going to connect our RPS over to our RPS of our engine so we know how much RPS we have. And the throttle is going to go to our throttle lever. The next thing we can do is connect over our starter motor and that's going to be connected quite simply. And then we need to do our air and our fuel. So there we go. So we've got clutch, we've got air, and we've got our fuel. Same thing on the other side. We're going to connect our clutch, our air, and lastly, going to connect our fuel. There shouldn't be any other canodes that we need. We do not need um, a radiator fan because we're not to have any radiators. We do need to connect our on and off. So we will connect our on and off switch. The last thing we need is electricity, of course. I'm going to connect electricity to every single one of the nodes I need on either engines. And finally, we can go and test this and see what is going to happen. So spawning in the creations, we should be able to test these now to see which one of them are going to be the more powerful. As I said, they are set up exactly the same to each other. The only differences between them is going to be the orientation of the cylinders, whether we're doing a straight or inline here and we're doing a flat. So let's go and turn them on. So we're going to go and turn the first one on. We're going to get up to maximum RPS here. See what it can do. The same thing goes on the right hand side. Turn it on maximum RPS on this side. Now, both of these engines are currently up and running. We can confirm that by having a look at the RPS on both of them. You can see this one has stopped off at around 9.38 RPS, whereas this one is sitting around 9.7 RPS. Okay, so a little bit difference in terms of the RPS currently at the moment. They should ideally straighten out to each other. But let's have a look at the value of our actual generators and see which one is producing the most amount of power here. So we're currently producing 21.4 on our inline engine. What about our flat? We're producing 22.8 so we're getting a little bit more performance out of this engine now of course if we were to go and add gearboxes and we we're to scale this engine up that could be quite a big difference between those two engines now let's actually check we're still running at 9.46 and we're still running at 9.7 so this is able to run at a little bit higher rps in comparison to the other one now this is quite an interesting result and of course, hopefully this will be quite a good idea when you are building with modular engines here in Stormux is helping you design your engine according to the performance that you need. Now, as I said earlier on, you should be able to scale this up to a medium engine and also a large engine. They should behave the same. As I said earlier on, you can get more performance out of these engines by adding turbochargers. When I mean in turbochargers, you can use an impeller pump to force more air into these engines, meaning that we would need to compensate with more fuel and in theory giving us more power out of them. 
Now you'll notice that if we look at the ECU here, you can see that air is maxed out. We're giving it as much air as we possibly can. However, to catch up to our AFR value, which is 14, we only need to give it 0.4 fuel. And the same thing goes on this side. Also only need to give it 0.4 fuel. So by adding a turbocharger or an impeller pump, forcing more air into it, we should be able to increase our fuel and in theory, increase our power outputs on both of these engines. So a very interesting little result. And uh, yeah, hopefully this has helped you guys. If you want to see some more of these types of videos where we start comparing engine designs, start looking if we should use turbochargers, you should use flywheels and things like that, let me know in the comments below and we can obviously look at doing some more videos like this. Anyway guys, I hope you have enjoyed this small little quick little video where we've gone and tested these two different engine types together and hopefully it's been somewhat entertaining and also helpful for yourself in building in Stormworks. And until next time, we will see you then.